Marcus's dad is on the uh, the Common Council. Uh, that's, the that's how you got your job with the city, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's why I quit my job with the city. I'm I want to be very clear. That's why I quit working for the city because my dad got elected. Um, and uh, Marcus is black, and uh, and but your, your mom is white, and uh, so you have an interesting perspective on on all of what has gone on in the last. Well, all of what's <laughs> going on. Yeah. No, no. So you know, you're talking about Charlottesville. Uh, Charlottesville, over, uh, Charlottesville over the weekend, um, horrible. And uh, a right-wing rally. And part of this is worth thinking about. If you're not, I mean, I, I, I guess I don't know what it's like. I don't know what it was like for someone to come out and protest against you just based on your race. We, well, as a white person in the United States, it's not something that I've ever had to experience. But if you're black, you've experienced. If you're Jewish, you've experienced it. Right. And so that alone is what went on over the weekend. You have an entire group of uh, people who hate, and they're out marching for you know the whole this Robert E. Lee stat, the statue and and all of that. But they're really. They're just they just hate people who of color. Yeah. And I mean, that in itself is quite a demonstration and can be taken personally. Yeah. Well, if there's, you're black, there's Nazis. <laughs> but, right. you know, the thing is, I don't mind the Nazis. Like, as Chris Rock would say, you know, Nazis are going to Nazi. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. those people exist. <laughs> but but what bothers me the most are the people that want to pretend like it's not an issue and say, oh, well, we don't talk about it. Or, yeah, I don't support that part, but I support other things. Listen. The Nazis, some of them, were wearing Make America Great Again hats. They were saying they support the president. Well, it was a, it was a bring back the right rally. That's what yeah, it was. And, it and was so, support the right rally. The other thing that's interesting is when they say this Robert E. Lee thing, <clears throat> this is the part that I, I haven't heard anybody talk about, it. maybe because it's not a very good point, but I'm going to take a shot at it. <laughs> You'll be told this is about, this is about tradition. That, that statue does not represent racism. Uh, it doesn't represent slavery. It's part of our history. It shouldn't be taken down. Then I ask then, why then does the KKK, why then does the white supremacy, these white supremacy groups, why are they fighting to keep it there? Right. For for history? I don't think so. They're fighting because there is a race, there is racism that it, it does symbolize racism. I mean, Otherwise, they wouldn't be involved. Clearly, I mean, how many how many statues of Hitler and Himmler are there in Germany? Yeah. That's a big part yeah. of their history. Well, the Germans can't understand how we can have these demonstrations uh, under our government because freedom of expression, right. uh, freedom of speech. We allow because that's not allowed in Germany. You couldn't go have a Nazi march. No, in Germany. but you know the the thing. But the the thing I want to say is like. We've had a sea change. Our federal government is taking a position on multiculturalism and diversity that hasn't been taken by our federal government since the 50s. You know, and, and we, we talked about this real time. This isn't revisionist history, right? When, when the election were coming, we came on and talked about cultural issues, Donald Trump's past, who Jeff Sessions is, Steve Bannon, Sebastian Gorka, what they stand for and what their rhetoric around these issues are. And how that's affecting America. And look, before that, before the Charleston, um, before the Virginia stuff, the Charlottesville stuff, there was a mass shooting in Minnesota that a lot of people were um, disappointed the president didn't speak out against. Um, You know, we were here on the show talking about the lady that lets her kid bring a Confederate flag to school. I mean, the tone around these issues has but changed. Sarah, Sarah Palin coming out uh, uh, with the, uh, the, the congressman that had in his personal office... Uh, a, a an art project that a student had done that portrayed the Statue of Liberty as a Muslim woman, right. and Sarah Palin came out against that um, vehemently. Uh, the, this whole movement is to me a little bit on the scary side. Here's what the president said um, uh, over the weekend after this horrific attack, um, and let's be honest: the demonstration on both sides was probably irresponsible. It got out of control on on both sides. But understand, one side is is really demonstrating for hatred of a certain race, and the other side is demonstrating against their demonstration. One side are Nazis, right. literal I Nazis. I understand. What I'm saying, though, is there was violence on both sides. Well, so yeah, but that, one side is Nazis. I do get that. <laughs> that part I get. Here's the president's comment.
<laughs> of course, that's the president's comment. Um, <laughs> that's the Game of Thrones remix right along there. Along <laughs> with Game of Thrones, uh, the Game of Thrones remix. Um, hold on, I'll play it without that music. Let's try this. On this week's episode, <laughs> the president <laughs> takes out Jeff Sessions. Was that the Daily Double going off again? Hope I could. <laughs> that might have been. All right. Uh, okay. So I'll get the president's comments in a second. But um, is this is too much being made? And we'll open the lines on this to 315-736-0186. Is too much being made of the president and the statement that he made and the fact that he didn't call out white supremacists or KKK or Nazis? Well, I, I mean, I think that there was a special obligation on part of the president only because these people are saying they support his agenda. They're there for him. And he should say that is not the kind of support I want because that's what most presidents would have done because that's what leadership is. I don't. Can I just? I don't agree that they're. Well, I guess that they was. It was a bring back the right movement. No, no, no. no. You got to like, understand. They were. They were. They were touting President Trump. The, that's what they're the, saying. They're rally, his soldiers. They. They were. I he mean, should say no. You're that not. That doesn't. That doesn't make the president. That doesn't make the president necessarily agree with them. Correct. But they were touting President Trump at this rally, and that's not and, his fault. And David Duke was out touting the president and we finally have a president and that can move our agenda forward that's dangerous for the president to me someone and it clearly wasn't steve bannon should have been mr president you have to denounce them they're saying that you're with them you have to denounce them and they gave him an opportunity to say that at the press conference these people are claiming they support you that was the question right Here, here yeah here's what the president said it's eight fifteen. Uh, I've I just redid it. This Don't, egregious it display of hate. It's our very very fast internet here that's uh, playing really well. He basically said, um, "On uh, uh, this was terrible. It's horrible on many different sides." In other words, what did he? Oh, what do you mean by that? Did he mean Black Lives Matter? <clears throat> well, they're equal. The Nazis are the same as the people protesting. This egregious yeah. display of hatred, bigotry. Oh, it's playing. And violence on many sides. On many sides. On many sides. Right. So I, I, I'm not trying to defend this group, and I'm not trying to defend the president. He does say, when he's talking about egregious display of hatred and bigotry, I don't think he's talking about the counter demonstrators, right? I mean, he's talking about... On many know. sides. How right. do you know and that? Then he goes, he and, goes and, and says and, many sides. And Jeff, you are in... I know you like to, to try to play devil's advocate, but there are... There are more Republicans coming out on this against the president than there are Democrats. Than there are Democrats. It's um, not a Republican And it's thing. not just Lindsey Graham and John McCain. This is, and even the vice president came out and defended the president because that's what he has to do, but then said, and there's no room for Nazis and, and white supremacists. This is hatred, and there's no room for that in America today. So the president's out on a, he's on an island with this. There's this, this his own party is in complete defiance on this. Now, now think about Barack Obama. And I understand people on the right questioned his sincerity around it. But when it came out what Reverend Wright was saying about America and the church, remember that was a big thing in the campaign? Yeah. He gave an hour speech, right, about his upbringing and how he's wrestled with these issues and, and how he doesn't support what the reverend says. And he explained to the people what his position was on it. Now, you could say it was insincere or not, but he addressed it because somebody who was purported to be a supporter of his said something that he thought was so egregious he needed to respond because that's what you're supposed to do. The president needs to say, these guys are not part of my agenda. And he should have said that from the beginning because they're associating themselves with him. And the beginning could go back uh, to the campaign, to be honest, because this this topic came up during the campaign. Unless he well. agrees with them, which apparently <laughs> which, we're which dismissing he did as a denounce possibility. them at that time. He was he was uh, called, he for, not, called he out for not doing it. That's the problem today. If he comes out today... Why wasn't this done on Saturday? This is what doesn't make any sense to me. Because you, you've started this controversy that shouldn't yeah. be here. Because if he comes out today and says, because now the White House has said when he, when he said it, he was talking about the Nazis, he was talking about uh, the white supremacists and, and the KKK. Well, why not just say it? Because you know as the president, as the leader of the free world, people are hanging on your every word. And he, re he read it, so it was a prepared statement. It just should have been done. So if he comes out today and he does it, it's because he was forced to do it. It won't mean as much. But it's not in a box. Like, remember, 
he he failed in the campaign to immediately denounce David Duke, right? And yes. that was the big story for a time. I mean, look, Coretta Scott King wrote a, le- a letter against his attorney general about his right, his history in prosecuting Jim Crow. Yeah. I mean, so at some point you have to consider that this is how the man feels. Uh, Wayne is on three one five seven three six zero one eight six. If you want to pipe in on this, I got about another seven minutes on this topic, so uh, oh, maybe yeah, maybe today. not maybe not even that. But Wayne, what do you think? Um, I just wanted to know. This is a question. Okay. What makes the hatred and separatism of Black Lives Matter? What makes that any different than what's going on down there with all the other stuff and all these other groups that are included? You know, with the with the hating the white cops and all the violence that goes along with that. What makes that any different than these white separatists? Can I that, which I don't stand for any of them. But I'm saying, what makes it any different? Having the Black Lives Matter, the white separatisms, the Nazis, or whatever. Okay. What makes all it right. any different? Okay. All right. One thing that makes them different is their history. Nazis have a history in the world that's a lot different than the history of Black Lives Matter, which came out of civil rights protests. Number two, the president at the time and the leaders of the Black Lives Matter movement said, we don't want to be a violent movement. We don't want cops to die. And they tried to do it. Right. But maybe they are. But there's people acting in that group that they can't control. And that could happen with any group. Right. But the leadership of that group wasn't endorsing it. In this case, you have Nazis who want a separate America for a different race. Yeah, there's no question what the there's no question what the goals are of the KKK. And the the white supremacists and uh, and the Nazis. There's no. I mean, but, they're but, Nazis. But Black Lives Matter really came from a movement where they are just in the title saying we matter too. And 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 I understand there. And that's why I said over the weekend there were people that were irresponsible on both sides and violent and were arrested. And that's all bad. But it still doesn't justify uh, this group coming out and just preaching hatred and and really the eradication of the. Uh, of, of a certain race. Thank you, guys. Have a good day. Yeah, I, yeah, take care. I, 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 I think there was a great question that Wayne asked, and I do, I get your answer, and I think you're right. There's people inside the movement, the Black Lives Matter movement, saying, we shouldn't be violent. This is not what we're trying to achieve. And I, there's a difference there in these two cases. But I will say, you know, there was a lot remember of burning the cities but, down. But, but remember, they're, you're, they're, whether they're doing that or, or not, just like Martin Luther King's movement versus Malcolm X, it came from the premise of making something better versus the premise of getting Carrying rid of an entire down. race. Right. Plus, there's you a history. Listen, you I don't want to pretend that I'm I, I'm not defending this uh, this Nazi group. I'm not. But the whole thing about pig, pigs in a blanket that they were chanting and stuff like that, uh, that's listen, not to make it better. It's No. No. It, it comes from the premise of making it better. And, and yes, it is. Yes, it is. It, the Black Lives Matter comes from the premise of making, li- making life better for black people. Just because you have rogue members, it's the same argument that Martin Luther King had with Malcolm X. He wanted everything to be peaceful. And there were movements on the other side that became very violent. He didn't want that. But plus, but you can't, and, and Marcus, you're yeah. far better talking about this than me, but let me just finish this point. My, my point is that it comes from the premise of doing improving society now yes there are people that go out of control and take it the wrong way and use it for their own they loot they burn down cities they do that's horrible and irresponsible but that comes the the movement came from a a, from the premise of making life better you cannot say that about the nazis well making life better for them they think you're right yeah you understand what i'm saying i I do it it, it wasn't hate it was it was reaction to what they say is hate now, hate is going to come along with it. There are racist black people in this world. Let's not. There's tons. There are people, black people, that hate white people. But it, the movement, while out of control at times, had a premise, and it wasn't hate. Right. And and one of the things I want to say is, it, to me, it says a lot about how people perceive other people that they think like Black Lives Matter, which arise out of civil rights protests, are equivalent to Nazis. I mean, do we know what Nazis did? I mean, there was concentration camp. We fought a war, for God's sakes, against these people. They're equivalent to a group that was protesting. And even if they looted, even if they rioted, they're the same as Nazis. And anybody who breaks the law needs to be uh, needs to be held accountable for that. No doubt. Whether no matter what side you're on, 
And the Nazis have the right to march and, and peaceful protest as well in this country. I, and like I said, I, I thought it was a fair question from Wayne. I just want to be clear. I'm not comparing the two. In the 6 o'clock hour, I compared what happened this weekend to ISIS protesting. Right. So I just want to be clear. I'm not comparing mm-hmm. the two groups. That's an equals. interesting question that we could land for Habika tomorrow, too, right. is at what point does a protest, does a movement, w- at what point does your free speech stop and your free expression, expression come to an end? When it meets treason, um, that was what kind of was an interesting question there. I want to let a couple people quickly pipe in, and then we'll we'll break here. Keith, the paper guy, what do you say, Keith? Hey, uh, Bill and Marcus. Um, What's up? Hello. My question is this: um, Mayor Mario Cuomo wants uh, President Trump to say something. Andrew now, really, Cuomo. if Trump would actually say, you know, he. he uh, doesn't uh, agree with uh, these people and the way they uh, acted towards uh, his uh, his movement. Do you think actually anybody in the uh, media would actually care if he said anything? Well, because I think I the people, there are people Trump's fans and Trump's supporters already know about Trump and what his beliefs are. So why do people have to have somebody go out? And Actually, because Trump doesn't because the president doesn't represent just his supporters. He represents all of us, America as a whole, not just his supporters. I understand that. But I mean, if you, uh, if and, and, and let's be honest, what Cuomo, uh, Andrew Cuomo did is political. That's it's just political. A political. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily. So, yeah. And I think it's too late now. Uh, I do, I totally agree. If he said something yeah, now, it would where seem was he disingenuous. On Twitter Sunday morning. Right. I know. Right. The, the and, problem that I saw with this is, and I tweeted out on Sunday is the president has attacked vehemently, aggressively, by name, politicians, Democrats, Republicans, Congress, Senate uh, representatives. He attacks. When someone does something, he attacks. Why was such a, a passive announcement made here? where it was just a delicate announcement. This guy isn't known for just delicate announcements. He hammers people. He should have been <laughs> hammering the KKK. Well, now, just, quickly, remember he was in Europe and there was a terrorist attack by Muslims. And the whole complaint from Britain was, wow, this guy reacted so quick before we even knew all the facts. He was quick to jump yeah. on that. So now what's Here, the difference? And to Marcus's point, just yeah, as he is demanding that people say radical Islam, he should be saying... I denounce white supremacy. It's uh, the same concept. Tom, and that's coming, by the way, from a Trump supporter. I can't believe I just heard Tom you say in New Hampshire. Wow. Yeah, listen, uh, yeah. guys, I, I would like to put this in a little context. Let's look at the, uh, the American Civil Liberties Union lawsuit to allow the American Nazi Party to march through very heavily Jewish Skokie, Illinois. ACLU supported the Nazis. The Nazis were the same then as they are now. Just the point for you to you know research and look at. For- yeah, but that's a, that's an argument of, uh, of 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 free speech and free express, expression. Yeah, I, I don't think that means that they support well. the Nazis. When no it one, takes it to a no, level, Tom, of somebody driving a car into people to kill that's, people, that that's, takes it to a new level. That is the egregious act. That's that terrorism. That's awful. That's that's got. To, I'm not supporting. But just as you continue your... Uh... Okay, I get it. But I, I think we all agree here that the right to march it's is fine. not all... And free expression, free speech is not always pretty and enjoyable, and not everybody agrees with it. And it does also cover... For it to cover someone who is promoting whatever their good is... It also promotes people who promote. Uh, it, it protects people who promote. Plus, that. don't do it in my name. I mean, that's that's one of the problems I have. You know, um, when I heard people on the right speak about Muslims, they're like, "Well, where are all the good Muslims speaking out against ISIS?" And they started this whole "not in my name" campaign. Well, where are all the good Trump supporters speaking out against the bad Trump supporters, particularly Trump, because they're saying that they're doing this in accordance with his policy and agenda. And how could he let them do that in his name? Uh, this will be continuing, and uh, I, I wanted your take on it, Marcus, because uh, I'm you're, black. You're black. <laughs> <laughs> what else? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not. Why not? Why not? <laughs> so um, you know. All right. <laughs> thank you. All right. Take care. And thank you on the hospital too. Um, as uh, and you have, we've all kind of heard some rumblings that maybe there is some progress being made. That this thing is going to survive after all. I think it's going to get done. I think it's 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 too big a thing. It's too much of a need because if we don't do it now, what are we going to have? A hundred year old hospitals for the next fifty years. So I think it's going to get done.